focus versus diffuse thinking. Since the very beginning of the 21st century, neuroscientists have been making profound advances in understanding the two different types of networks in the, that the brain switches between, highly attentive states and the more relaxed resting state networks. We'll call the thinking processes related to these two different types of networks the focused mode and diffuse mode respectively. <clears throat> these modes are highly important for learning. It seems you frequently switch back and forth between these two modes in your day to day activities, driving one mode or the other, not consciously in both at the same time. The diffuse mode does seem to be does seem to be able to work quietly in the background on something you are not act actively focusing on. Sometimes you may also flicker for a rapid moment to diffuse thinking mode. <clears throat> Focus mode thinking is essential for studying maths and science. It involves a direct approach to solving problems using rational, sequential, analytical approaches. The focused mode is associated with the concentrating abilities of the brain's prefrontal, prefrontal cortex located right behind your forehead. Turn your attention to something and BAM! The focus mode is on, like the light, like the tight penetrating beam of a flashlight. <clears throat> Diffuse mode thinking is also essential for learning maths and science. It allows us to suddenly gain a new insight on a problem we've been struggling with and is associated with big picture perspectives. Diffuse mode thinking is what happens when you relax your attention and just let your mind wander. This relaxation can allow different areas of the brain to hook up and return valuable insights. Unlike focus mode, diffuse mode seems less affiliate, affiliated with any one area of the brain. You can think of it as being uh, diffused throughout the brain. Diffuse mode, diffuse mode insights often flow from preliminary thinking that's been done in a focused mode. Learning also involves a complex flickering of neural processing among different areas of the brain, as well as back and forth between hemispheres. So this means that thinking and learning is more complicated than simply switching between the focused and diffused modes. But fortunately, we don't need to go deeper into the physical mechanisms. We're gonna take a different approach. So the focus mode, type in pinball machine. To understand focused and diffused mental processes, we're going to play some pinball. Metaphors are powerful tools for learning maths and science. In the old game of pinball, you pull back on a spring-loaded plunger and it whacks a ball, which ends up bouncing randomly around circular rubber bumpers. Look at the following illustration. When you focus your attention on the problem, your mind pulls back to the metal plunger and releases a thought. Boom! That thought takes off, bumping around like a pinball in the head in the head on the left. This is the focus mode of thinking. Notice how the round bumpers are very close together in the focus mode. In contrast, the diffuse mode on the right has its circular bumpers farther apart. If you want to pursue this metaphor further, you can think of each bumper as a cluster of neurons. The close bumpers of the focus mode mean that you can more easily think a precise thought. Basically, the focus mode is used to concentrate on something that's tightly connected in your mind, often because you are familiar and comfortable with the underlying concepts. If you look closely at the upper, bar, upper part of the focus mode thought pattern, you'll see wider, well-trodden parts of the line. 
we are, oops, here. <clears throat> that broader path shows how the focus mode thought is, is following along a route you've already practiced and all experienced. For example, you can use a focus mode to multiply numbers if you already know how to multiply, that is. If you're studying a language, you might use the focus mode to become more fluent with the Spanish verse con conjugation that you learned last week. If you're a swimmer, you might use the focus mode to analyze your breaststroke as you practice staying low to allow more energy to go into your forward motion. <clears throat> when you focus on something, the, the consciously attentive prefrontal cortex automatically sends out signals along neural pathways. These signals link different areas of your brain related to what you're thinking about. This process is a little like an octopus that sends its tentacles to different areas of its, of its surroundings to fiddle with whatever it's working on. The octopus only has so many tentacles to make connections just as your working memory only has so many things it can hold at once. We'll talk about working memory later. You often first funnel a problem into your brain by focusing your attention on words, reading the book or looking at your notes from a lecture. Your attentional octopus activates your focus mode. As you do your initial focus noodling around with the problem, you are thinking tightly using the pinball bumpers that are close together to follow along familiar neural pathways related to something you already know or are familiar with. Your thoughts rattle easily through the previously ingrained patterns and quickly settle on the solution. In maths and science, however, it often doesn't take much of a, much of a change for a problem to become quite different. Problem solving um, then grows more difficult. <clears throat> 